So we can obviously use a corded or cordless drill to drill holes. One of the advantages of using the drill press is that we have this reference surface, this table that we can clamp or secure our material to. By using this table, we can ensure that our drill is drilling straight up and down, or maybe at a 45 degree angle if we wish. Um, this is really what makes a drill press advantageous. Uh, another bonus feature of the drill press is we can set the speed settings and the torque settings for drilling in metal, drilling in plastic, drilling in wood. This particular drill press is set up for wood. So whenever you're in the wood shop, um, please consult with a technician before altering any of the settings uh, because these are set up specifically for drilling wood in the shops. Let's talk about some of the different parts of a drill press. First, we have a guard. The guard should serve as a reminder to keep your fingers away from the chuck and the drill bit while the drill press is in operation. If I swing that out of the way, I can see the chuck. This is the uh, part of the tool that holds onto our bit. This is the drill bit. The chuck can be locked and unlocked with the use of a chuck key. This chuck key is uh, on a little tether so it doesn't get lost. And it goes into the chuck and is used to tighten it down or loosen and release the drill bit. Let's take a closer look at the operation of the drill press chuck. You can see the key being inserted to unlock the drill press and I'm hand loosening to remove the bit. Now I'm going to put in a new smaller bit. I want to grab onto the solid part of the drill bit and I never want to grab onto the twisty part of the bit. I'm twisting the handle of the chuck down to grab on with the three fingers of the chuck. I'm going to hand tighten and now I'm going to grab the chuck key and do a final, final tightening to make sure that my bit is securely locked into the chuck. Check it with my fingers and now I'm ready to work. To remove the bit we do the reverse operation, loosening with the chuck key and then with our hands. Let's look at that operation one more time using a different kind of bit. This is called a Forstner bit. It's a bit for drilling big holes with a flat bottom. I've got the shaft of the bit and then this little silver part at the end is what I'm actually going to secure into the chuck. So again, I'm turning my chuck and twisting it till the teeth open up or the jaws open up. I'm going to insert the bit, tighten down with my hands, and then I'm going to take my chuck key and give that one final tightening to ensure that the bit does not fall out or stall out when I'm drilling through my piece of material. To uh, drill through our material, we would turn the drill press on and we would push down on this a uh, series of levers that brings the drill bit down and engages the material. Here is our on off switch. We pull for on, push for off. We have a light, we have a laser, and the laser indicates where the drill will land. And we have our rotations per minute, which will show up when the drill press is on. Uh, this drill press is fully adjustable. I can change the rotations per minute uh, depending on the type of material I'm trying to drill through. Back here, we've got a column that supports the table, and the table rides up and down on the column so I can set it for whatever project I'm trying to fit in here to drill holes in. To adjust the table on the drill press, first re reach back behind the column on the left-hand side and unlock the lock. Holding onto the table with my uh, left hand, I'm going to crank the table up or down setting it to the appropriate height for what I'm trying to drill through. When I reach my desired height, I want to make sure that the table is shifted in such a way that the bit is over the open hole or the sacrificial insert in the middle of the table. Even if I have a piece of wood down covering the entire surface of the table, please turn the drill bit uh, table so that the bit itself is directly over this open insert. That keeps us from damaging or marring this really nice reference surface. When you reach your desired location, crank the lock back down, and it should be just hand tight. If I were to walk up to this tool and try and make an adjustment without unlocking the lock, I could probably pull hard enough to change the height of this. However, doing so would damage the gears inside of this and uh, would be a very expensive repair. So please, always undo the lock before changing the height and secure the lock whenever you're done. In the shop, it is our practice to protect the table surface with a sacrificial piece of MDF or plywood. 
just place this on top of the table surface and clamp it down with some F clamps. Whenever this board is worn out and needs refreshed, let the technician know and they will put a new board in its place. This component of the drill press is called the stop. If I press in the button, I can bring it down and make it so that my drill press stops at a certain depth every time I drill a hole. I can also spin the stop to adjust it in a much finer fashion and really dial it into a specific depth. This is very useful when I'm using the Forstner bit and trying to drill a hole with a flat bottom and I need to repeat that operation over and over again. If you find that the drill will not go as deep as you wish, um, just check and make sure your stop is not engaged. Slide it all the way up to the top and that will allow you to have a bigger range of travel when you're using the drill press. So if I look up here while the drill press is on, it will tell me how fast the drill bit is spinning. Some materials require high speeds, some require slow speeds, some require somewhere in the middle. So um, I'm just gonna demonstrate how this works. I'm gonna pull it on, I'm gonna crank on this wheel back here, and you'll see the numbers change, and you'll hear the sound of the drill press change uh, as I'm shifting through the different settings. So that's very low. Now we're at a very, very high speed. You'll notice the optical sensor takes a little while to catch up. Um, if it gets slot us on it, it will read just all zeros. So occasionally it has to be cleaned out. If it's not reading very clearly. Let us know and we'll clean it out for you. Never change the speed of a drill press while it is stopped. It has to be running uh, to change the speed in this fashion. Whenever using the drill press, it's important to hold the workpiece securely. If you're strong enough and you've got a big enough board, you can hold it against the table yourself but with bigger drill bits, it may want to twist or spin on you. In that case, you can take a longer piece and put it to the left-hand side of the rear post. This secures it against the post in the event that the bit grabs it and it tries to start spinning. Our preferred method of securing material to the table is using clamps. So here I'm just clamping this board down with some F clamps, which allows me to have my left hand free, and I can operate the drill press with complete confidence that the board will not be grabbed and spun or ejected out at me. This is the best way to work. If I shift that clamped board back, I can actually use it as a guide. So if I want to make repeated, safe, drilled holes in a board, I can use this as a little fence to lead my material across, and I can make sure that it's consistent every time I drill a hole. When working with very small pieces, they may be too small to hold safely. In this instance, we can use an F-clamp to secure the piece which gives us a larger surface to hold on to farther away from the spinning blade. So I'm going to hold on to the rear of the clamp when drilling this little piece. So as you can see, my drill bit is having some difficulty passing through the material. It's stalling out. The drill bit is getting stuck because it's not secure enough in the chuck. If this happens to you, just stop the drill press, wait for the drill bit to stop completely, and then re-tighten the chuck. This will keep your bit secure and you'll be able to drill through your material without problem. So here's a strategy for using the Forstner bit that leads to really nice drilled holes. So I'm going to go through this hole, say 90%, until the bottom spur of the drill bit is just poking out the back of the material. So it takes a little practice to get used to doing this, but now I know how to stop right when I feel that spur poke through the board. When I flip the board over and go through on the back side, I will clear out that hole completely and leave a nice crisp cut on either side of the drilled hole. That extra work and time may seem a little silly, but if we drill a hole uh, and try to pass all the way through in one pass, uh, we can see that it damages the board in the back side and we're left with a bunch of chips and flakes and uh, splinters sticking out the back. So it really is a nicer way to make a hole. For making larger holes, we often use a hole saw. This drill bit consists of two pieces. There's the saw component on the exterior, and on the inside there's a twist drill bit that it threads onto. Attach these together and then chuck them up in the chuck. This saw produces a plug. It removes the entirety of the wood as it's sawing through. So you can also use it to cut out and create little plugs or little discs for whatever project you're planning on making. Be careful when using a hole saw. They're a high torque tool and your material needs to be secured down very, very tightly to the table. When you're finished with the hole saw, make sure that you remove the plug 
and separate both pieces, returning them to their proper storage location. In the Sam Fox shops, we have hundreds and hundreds of drill bits. Be sure to return your drill bit to its proper location when you're done using it. You can check on the shaft of the drill bit, which shows the size. You can also just hold it up to the trough of drill bits, or the box, and find where it fits appropriately. Work safe when using the drill press. Put away all loose articles of clothing, make sure your hair is tied back, and don't wear gloves when using this tool. Always wear safety glasses, hearing protection, and engage the guard before starting your drilling process.